Hey, welcome back to lesson 3.2. Uh, we are looking at the comparing evolution models. Uh, we're going to do an answer review, a compare and contrast as it were. So what you're going to need for this particular video is your completed evolutionary model comparison, the sheet that you see here on the screen, uh, and your uh, sheet from lesson 3.1, the uh, rules for sickle cell disease. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go over the responses on this worksheet. You're going to compare them to your responses and look to see where they fall, where your responses fall. If you have any questions uh, as we're going through the video, um, you know, pause, re uh, repeat as often as you need to, record your questions down, and reach out to your peers and to your teachers for any clarification uh, that you might have. Um, that you might need. So we're going to start at the top with the graphic organizer. You were given a chart here that has the variation, the three types of ecologies and change over time on the left column, uh, this right here. Then you have a column for Lamarck's theory, so that's uh, Jean-Baptiste de Lamarck, and you also have a column for Charles Darwin's theory. So what we're going to do uh, for the sake of simplicity is we're just gonna go row by row. So we're gonna look at variation first, then the three different types of ecologies, and then the change over time. Then at the very end, we will look at the uh, brief explanation of which model ours is most sim uh, similar to and why. So first things first, variation. Remember variation is kind of the genotype, phenotype, the traits, the different types of traits that we see in the population. So for Lamarck's theory, elephants have short and long trunks. That's also found in Darwin's theory. Uh, elephants have short and long trunks. This is where things change though. The ecology of reproduction. Lamarck's theory states that elephants will stretch their trunk out over their lifetime, which then makes them longer. And then they pass these longer trunks off to the offspring. So that means that with a constant use of uh, reaching and stretching and, and trying to uh, get the food and resources that they need, their trunks grow longer than that is how, and what that is what is passed along to the offspring. Darwin, on the other hand, said that some elephants are born with longer trunks and others are not. This is a trait that is inherited uh, from uh, the parent generation. So they're born with that particular um, trait. It's a genetic base. Primary difference there. To reiterate, uh, to repeat that, Lamarck said that the elephants were able to stretch their trunk out, whereas Darwin says they were born that way uh, and it was inherited from the parent generation. We need to be very careful in this particular one because this is where I see most errors because of how we use language. When we talk about how a species has adapted to something, it makes it sound like the species is actively doing the uh, adaptation to an environment, um, which in the case that we're talking here about evolutionary inheritance uh, is, is not the case they are not willfully adapting to a situation. That's not like uh, adapting to a situation to change a behavior or something like that. That's a different use of that term. In this particular case, Lamarck is saying that they are these elephants are intentionally stretching their trunks out over a lifetime uh, to reach the food sources they need or what have you. Uh, and then uh, when they get to reproductive age, they are then passing uh, along the longer trunks to the offspring. Darwin, on the other hand, says that the elephants are born with the genes for longer trunks or shorter trunks. It's something that is inherited. Okay, moving on to competition. Uh, both Lamarck and Darwin agree that elephants are competing for the same things. They're competing for food, water, shelter, and space. Same thing as humans. The differential reproductive uh, success who survives to make babies? So the elephants with the longer trunks are better able to get the resources that they need. So they're the ones that survive um, and are able to reproduce. 
there's no argument between uh, Darwin and Lamarck's theory on this. Uh, they, they are both in agreement there. So finally, the change in population over time. Uh, when there's an advantage of having a longer trunk, the percentage of the elephants who have longer trunks will increase in number and um, the percentage of the population. Uh, so having the longer trunk is advantage uh, advantageous. Uh, so they survive in order uh, to produce more and more elephants with longer trunks. So that's the change in the population over time, an increased uh, percentage of elephants with longer trunks. Again, no disagreement between Lamarck and Darwin here. The biggest difference, the difference, is this reproduction of Lamarck's theory of in, uh, elephants willfully stretching their trunks out over time uh, to uh, make them longer, uh, whereas Darwin says that they will, um, uh, the elephants are born with the longer trunks, the, the genes that make that. So uh, this is the point where I would make uh, some sort of comment about how I would have willfully increased my height at some point in time, uh, but maybe there it is. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, looking at the explanation, the model that is most similar to ours for sickle cell disease um, is Darwin's. Right? Uh, Darwin indicates that it is a heritable trait. It is something that is genetically passed on from uh, the parent generation to the offspring generation, and that is what happens over time for the uh, for the gene that is advantageous, so the one that survives uh, to produce their offspring. The gene that is disadvantageous or not advantageous generally does not survive as often to produce their offspring, so we will see fewer and fewer of those individuals. So I hope this uh, explanation helps. Uh, check your work on this. If you have any questions about it, again, please check in with your teacher, check in with your peers. Uh, do the explanation. Uh, as I've said before, it's probably one of the most powerful learning tools is taking the opportunity to uh, explain it to somebody else. It really helps you process the information um, as you're doing it. I refer to it as think talking uh, for myself. So. Um, and as a reminder, if you haven't done this yet, make sure that you make an entry into your learning tracking tool for Lesson 3. Um, and Lesson 3 is going to include 3.1, which is Rules for Sickle Cell Disease, and of course 3.2, which is Comparing Evolutionary Models. Thank you again so, so much for your time, uh, your efforts, your energy, uh, and your dedication to all of this. Uh, I hope that you have a beautiful day. Thank you.